All right, so welcome to HB Ministries, a ministry for you to believe, behold, and become all God's created you to be in whatever season of life. So for today's devotional, which is absolutely powerful, we are going to be looking at chapter 9 in the book of Nehemiah, verses 1 through 38. And there is so much in this prayer, longest prayer in the Bible. But I'm going to show you right now that there are seven things that happen in this prayer. Seven amazing things. And let me tell you what a prayer to pray for yourself, your families, your church, um, loved ones, anything that's going on in your life. And most importantly, our nation. What a time to be praying for our nation, especially with election coming up in just a couple months. Now, what I want to share with you is that at the very bottom of today's message, you are going to find a PDF file. This PDF file is made for you to walk through each part of the verse, which I'm going to do with you right now. But I want you to have your personal handout. You're also going to get a handout of this prayer revival right here. And you can see after every point, there is a few things. This is a great thing to journal somewhere and keep. I'm loving this. I'm going to keep this tucked in my Bible because it's a reminder of why we pray and what revival is all about. For example, number one, God's word will not return to him void. So we're going to see here in this prayer that God is going to accomplish something and his purposes no matter where we are at right now. He uses written word to bring revival. How tragic that we don't take God's word seriously. And I pray that today's devotional will kind of boo you up to understand that the Bible is God's word and we need to proclaim it. Number two, the only behavior that changes is observed behavior. We are reflecting as a nation on a lot of observed behavior right now. And I think we do this as parents. We observe behavior in our children. I think in our jobs, we observe behavior. Personally, we observe behavior. And then we go back and we reflect on God's faithfulness versus our rebellious lives. So much truth there. We need to confess sins and make a commitment to change the direction of our life. Gosh, I remember doing that in so many different um, seasons of my life when God was changing me and transforming me. There's always a commitment for a need of change. There's always a time we get serious with God. Personal responsibility to make a commitment to God and to keep it. You will see this happening right inside of this prayer. You will see the people deciding to commit um, a life to God and to get disciplined. And I call it getting serious with God. And they got serious right here in verse 38. And because of all this, we make a sure covenant and write it. There's nothing wrong with writing out a prayer to God and letting him know that you want to get serious. There's nothing wrong with that. That's when God st steps in because we're seeking him. And that's why all along he's having patience with us. All along, he's going to show his great mercy. And I love that. So we will look at this verse in a second. I will show you my Bible flip through. Right now, I'm just giving you an overall. Number three, God's grace is greater than our sins. He is ready to forgive if you confess. Confess. There is a cleansing fountain that flows from the Lamb of God. Oh, I love that. Number four, God is sovereign in the affairs of the nations. He is just in dealing with my, mankind. And Nehemiah 9, 33, let's see what it says. It says it right here. However, you are just in all that has befallen us. For you have dealt faithfully, but we have done wickedly. Gosh, this is so good. We are acknowledging 
that our present distress is due to forsaking God, ignorance of his word and rebelling against his will for them. So that's failure. And we want to know that no matter what, we need to know as a nation that God is still going to outpour his grace on us. It's just taking time. So hang on. Now let's look here. Number five, there is going to be a time where people are going to turn and reflect on God's goodness in their life and in our nation. Jot down how God has been faithful to you and your family. Praise him and give him praise. Pause and give him praise. Thank him for jobs, promotions, achievements, family, and more. Give him glory. Number six, revival is going to affect every area of our lives. Personal, family, social, professional, business, church. Spend time praying for revival. God of grace. We need to be patient in all of this. Long-suffering and loving. God is up to something big. So we're going to take up some time right now. I'm going to go ahead and put the printouts of these down and I'm going to walk you through this right now. And I'm hoping you go ahead and download the PDF that's available right under this link. And you can go ahead and highlight your Bible and you can walk through every single area that I just explained on this handout is broken down in all of these verses. And then you can go ahead and identify our nation and maybe identify your personal life in these areas. So let's go ahead and get started and seek the Lord together. Alrighty, so you want to print off that PDF form. It's located right below, or you can head over to heatherbaxter.com and you can go to the blog and you'll see how to pray for your families or your nation. And you'll also see, um, if you go to the August calendar, uh, you will see it there. Now, if you're watching this after August, uh, I would highly suggest that you just hit the PDF right at the bottom of this video, right below the comment area, and you can print all of this off and, uh, you know what, get started. It'll help you highlight your Bible and walk through your Bible. For those that are new, remember, I'm doing something all the time. So whatever season it is that you're watching me, whatever year it is, head over to heatherbaxter.com and click the month above in my um, in my timeline there. You'll see whatever month we're on and you can join whatever we're studying at the time. I do something every single day with ladies. We are um, going through the Bible right now. We're studying the book of Nehemiah right now in 2020 of August. And so you're gonna see here that I am now gonna take these handouts and put them in order. And I'm gonna walk you through uh, the Bible pages that I broke apart according to Nehemiah 9, 1 through 38. So let me get set up so you can see how I do this in my little girl cave space. This is just my space where I do all of my work at. And um, I've got my candles burning and I got my devotional out and we are going to get ready to again, review this handout and break this down in our Bibles together. Alrighty, so we are going to go ahead and get started. I am opening up my New King James Woman Study Bible. So, so many of you love her. You can find her on eBay now used. Um, some people have the links in my previous uh, um, vlogs. I, I'm not going to post it because it always changes, but you can find this. They also have a new version of the Woman Study Bible. It's Thomas Nelson New King James Version. So she's an oldie but a goodie. Uh, I've had her for over 20 years. And I'll tell you what, there's a lot of prayers, mourning, um, revival, revelation in these pages. And really what I'm gonna show you today is how you can experience the same thing. But we have to get to a place where we're seeking God, where we're really wanting to hear from him. Another uh, verse that's in here that's absolutely one of my favorites and I prayed for it uh, through a season um, when my daughters were struggling with some things in life. So please look up my Psalms 143 study and it's up. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'll put the link right here for you and I'll post it below. But this is a study on uh, desperate um, to help somebody that is dealing with uh, depression or struggle or 
or anything in life and when you're really wanting a guidance and deliverance. And so this is all here for you on how I broke it down kind of the same way that we're going to do today's prayer. So I just wanted to share that with you. So let's go over to today's. There is a handout for today located for you below and that's your PDF. It's going to come in some sheets like this. I'm only giving you these sheets because I broke down the verses and if you are one that likes to write in your Bible, then you can use this or you could utilize this in a Bible study also. So we're going to look at Nehemiah chapter 9, 1 through 38, and we're going to realize if you follow me on my study, which was all of August, I also have the playlist for this study available on my uh, YouTube playlist, and you'll see it, Nehemiah Bible Study. There's six sessions, and they all have a PDF with a teaching sheet with them, so you will be like completely equipped. You could actually do this in a church study or a community group. For today, we're zooming in because we are talking about prayer and revival this week, but I wanted to bring this prayer to you because I think it's important that we learn to pray for revival for our families and our nation, especially with the election coming up, 2020 election. What a powerful way to pray for things. So here it says, how would you know when a revival comes to your personal life, your church, your community, or your nation? Nehemiah, nine one through five tells us what takes place when revival comes to god's people so we are going to go ahead now and we are going to study the breakdown of what is happening in this chapter so right here i have chapter nine and in my bible i put seek the lord because that is why we need to pray we need to pray to seek the lord because there are several things that he's going to do and i'm going to break down the verses of what he's going to do right now with you so verses chapter nine one through four you can see here that i kind of stuck it right here with my little blue pen and i highlighted this Humility before God, humility before God, being humble before God, getting ready to stand in your place and read from the book of the law, wherever that is. Is that positioning yourself in your girl cave or sitting outside at a favorite table, going to a park, going to a cafe? Where are you going to open the book of the law and just study and begin to um, get yourself ready to worship God through prayer? And let me put it in today's terms. Let's just learn how to spend time with God and learn how to pray. This is a picture of how to be humble. First of all, you got to assemble, you got to get ready, and you got to get to that place where you're going to open the word and you're just going to uh, confess to God and just humbly be present. Very simple. This is what they were doing in Nehemiah's time. And remember, if you do my study, Nehemiah had just completed the wall, which was his ruin. And now he wants to establish a committed way of worshiping. So he's getting his people ready to experience what should happen. So here he's saying, let's just be humble. Let's get humble before God. And this whole handout will talk to you a little bit more about that. So I'm not going to go into great detail because you can use your handout for that, which is absolutely amazing and refreshing to be reminded how revival truly comes. And the first way that it comes is getting yourself humbled before God, getting ready to read the word of God and um, continue to read it. Ask God what he wants to show you through it. And then your, pla your, your revelations are definitely going to come. You're going to start to see revival. So let's see how they prayed. So in verses five through six, you're going to see here, right here, five through six is a whole section of prayer of adoration and praise to the Lord God. Prayer and adoration. So here in your notes, you can kind of take this whole area at five through six, and here's the next page, all of prayer and adoration. And I'm going to help you see how they prayed, how they affirmed, and you can take pieces of this and highlight your Bible. So for example, I came here and I just wrote the word praise. And then I went ahead and said, stand up and bless the Lord your God forever and ever. So they're getting humbled. They're getting their area ready. They're getting their girl cave ready. However you want to get humble before God and make your place, your chair, your space. 
and then you're going to praise. And you are alone, our, the God. You have made heaven, the heaven of the heavens with all their host, the earth and, the, um, and everything on it, the seas and all that is in them. And you preserve them all. The hosts of heaven worships you. So this is getting our heart into a spirit of praise. As a matter of fact, this goes on uh, verses 7 all the way through 31. So you will see lots of things. And I pulled out and circled in orange a lot of places where they were worshiping. So I'm highly um, recommending that you break it down. I believe they worship in their provision because right here they were worshiping and thanking God and saying that you, you know, you chose Abraham and brought him out and gave him the name. You found his heart faithful. So there's going to be things in your life that the Lord is going to choose and bring out and give to you. And he's going to find some things for you. He works the same way in your life. And so I think that's awesome that God will choose, he'll give, he'll bring, and he'll find. He has mysteries for you just the same way. Here's another area of praise. They were praising him and thanking him because that the Lord saw the afflict, affliction. He heard their cry and then he showed them signs and wonders. So again, here's another area of praise. And sometimes we just have to take our whole prayer and just re, re, realize that God wants to show us and our nation uh, ways that he is working, which is right here, working all the time, how we need to be thankful that he is still hearing us in our little areas of the world praying due to affliction. And we got to be open for his signs and wonders. And we need to ask to see that. Now over here on this side, um, I'm talking about thanking God for making a way. So again, we're still here um, thanking God in ways of thanksgiving, but there's different ways that you could praise him. Here we're thanking him for making a way. He divided the sea before them. That was a powerful story. And so they went through in the midst of the sea. Well, there's divided seas God's going to do. There's deliverances for our nation. But you're going to see in a second that there's things that have to happen. You're going to see in the next session, there are things that we have to do as a people. But yet the Lord is always ready to divide and make a way. He's always, always, always wanting to be ahead of us in work. He wants to lead you by day with a cloudy pillar. He's going to lead you. He wants to give them light on the road which they should travel. He wants to give our government light on the road that they're traveling. He wants to give all of our governors. He wants to give our families, the moms, the dads. All of this is for you. He wants to come down and he wants to give us ordinances and laws only to light up our way to live the absolute best life ever. And I think that is so amazing. Um, he wants it to make it known to us. He wants to give us the bread from heaven, which is the true food that is going to fill our hunger emotionally, spiritually, and physically, and all the needs as a nation. Right now, I feel like our nation in 2020 is a little bit in the wilderness because I feel like we're in the wilderness here because we've lost our way of the true light, the true light of who is really trying to guide us. Amen. So you see where we're going here? Now, here are some more things on provision. If you go down, there is where God is faithful. It's going to show all down in these verses in verse 19 and 20 and 21 that he is going to be faithful even to those that are forsaking them in the wilderness. So here's a time to just realize that if things aren't going well in the family or things aren't going well in the nation and because of other people's disobedience, remember that God forgives and helps in difficult seasons and causes all things to work together for good. So sometimes the problems and sin will all work together. Don't think God is absent. He is definitely present. And it says, you will give your good spirit to instruct them. And I put, yes, yes, yes. Maybe you're just going to pray for the season that the spirit is made known to governors and, and the president and to your children and to your husband that they will thirst for that and it will be made known. So thank you, Lord, for that. So again, I'm still in this first section of showing you where all the praise is. Over here, 
there's more praise. This praise is that people took possession of the promised land that the Lord wanted to give. He wanted to possess. He wanted to multiply. He wanted to give people more. He wanted to have them live in abundance. So praise God because that is the vision. That is what he wants you to experience in this life. He does have vision. He does have abundance. He does have great goodness for you. What a reason to praise. Amen. Then we come up to the last few of... Uh, 31 and it's just helping us realize here and again this handout again is going to zoom you in on the verses I'm showing you what I already broke down so it's going to help you see that but here in the last few verses we're praising him because of his mercy and patience so we can praise him today for mercy and patience amen he is a compassionate God and he is waiting on the unfaithfulness of his people and so if we're Christians being faithful, let's pray for the unfaithfulness and others. And God's forgiveness will help us in these difficulties. So here he says here, and in the time of their trouble, when they cried to you, you heard from heaven. We need to keep crying. But after they had rest, they again did evil before you. So there is this place where people are going back and forth and returning and leaving and returning and leaving. But God is still doing something and he is going to bring all things around. And eventually you're going to see a committed life of discipline in some people. It happened in my personal life. So you could be praying about um, a, a child that you feel is just like going back and forth and back and forth. Well, let me tell you, there'll come a time because God's word does not remain void. It accomplishes what it purposes. And there'll be a time where they're going to have a committed life. You hang on, mama, and you keep praying. But remember, your prayers start with praises. All right, so the next section is prayer requests, 932 through 37. So you're going to see right here in this section of your Bible, you can label that prayer requests. And so right over here, let's go to 32 through 37. Here I have it right here, prayer requests. And you're going to see that now, therefore, our God, the great and the mighty and awesome God who kept covenant and mercy, do not let all the trouble seem small before you that has come upon us, our kings and our princesses, our priests and our prophets, our fathers, and on all your people from the days of the kings of Assyria until this day. However, you are just in all that has befallen us and all that has befallen us for you have dealt faithfully, but we have done wickedly. Now we can go in here and we can zoom in on praying for um, our people and asking God to be that great and mighty, awesome God who will keep his covenant and how God is going to deal with men. And here is a time for us to just be true and be asking God for us to live a well life and for us to experience rich land. Even though we're in a time of failure, it's okay. We have to set the vision for the land. We have to set the vision. We have to be the increase. We have to believe in the increase. We have to believe in the dominion over um, the, 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 the spirits and the, the darkness and the principalities. We have to be that person that arises above the great distress. So he has those people lined up. Are you that person right now? Step up and pray for your children. Pray for your husband. Amen. Use this to mark out your Bible and begin to journal and have focus in prayer. Realize that this whole prayer shifts. It shifts from praises to prayer requests. Then it shifts back on describing what's happening. Then it shifts back on the disobedience in the wilderness, but then it shifts back on God's faithfulness. So it's a story of how things work and move in our life. And I love Romans. God works all things for the good for those that love him and are called according to his purpose. But... I love, 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 love this. And I circled it. Yet for many years, you had patience with them. This is my prayer as a parent, that I have patience for my husband, that I have patience for my children, each one of them. I have patience for myself, for the needs that I have in God's timing in my life. So important. Nevertheless, in your great mercy, you did not utterly consume them nor forsake them. For you are God, gracious and merciful. Praise the Lord. So let's go on to the next section, section, prayer of commitment in a new covenant. And this is the end before I get to my questions that are so exciting, excited. And again, those are on the PDF form for you. I just made them pretty and you can make them pretty in your journal. But anyway, here it says prayer of commitment in a new covenant. Here is one of the best things. And I think this is a time where we can journal personally and we can learn to journal God's wisdom and get in agreement. Now I know in the month of September, 
I am going to be doing an entire month on studying wisdom and Proverbs and getting ourselves to commit to wiser things and praying for that, that agreement in writing. And so we're going to learn to agree in writing by journaling. That is going to be my schedule for everyone. And I'm very excited about that because it is a matter of obedience. But in order to obey, we need to walk in God's law and keep it and observe all his commandments. And I think we're going to learn that in Proverbs together. And so we can represent this together and we can learn together. And so God here is showing us that when people got serious with God that day in the book of Nehemiah, it was a revival that would last until the coming of Christ 400 years later. And that's when Christ came. Now we're still waiting for a revival here in our nation today. And Christ is still coming back. And there are signs. But let me tell you, revival is not an emotional upheaval. It is a commitment to action. It is a walk with God. Are we doing that, especially right before our election? Let's be praying for this specifically. And it for your family, however you are affected right now in 2020, uh, the pandemic, elections, jobs, mental illness is on the rise, all of this, we can be praying for a revival. Amen. It's right here. All of this is in his word for us to step up and pray. You are the people. God's given you the direction. He gave this to Nehemiah. Nehemiah gave it to his people in the wilderness. Now God is allowing us to use this in our wilderness for our personal provisions, our deliverance, our um us noticing that we can praise and, and love him in the midst of everything. He is faithful. He's just doing a work right now. So I want you to see that on your last handout, which is right here, I have some abiding principles and practical applications for you. Again, this handout's located right below in the PDF. I took one, two, three, four, five, and six. Again, I have some personal questions for you down here. So you can kind of do a little bit of homework with this verse, or you could do this verse, this Bible study, this prayer, right in a community group with ladies, gathering them together, doing a little study, and then praying for your nation. How amazing. I pray you take this up and uh, you can use this video as you get started, but God has something for you as you learn and just let his fountain flow through you. He is awesome. So here's some principles. I took these principles and of course I made them pretty because we like to make things pretty. Amen. And so here's what I did is I went ahead and I just wrote down, what are you actually seeing here in chapter nine? You are first seeing that God's word will not return to him void, meaning God is doing something. It will accomplish his purposes. He uses the written word to bring revival. He uses it. The Bible is God's word and we need to proclaim it. So this is really, really exciting. And you know what's tragic is it's listed right here. How tragic that we don't take God's word seriously. How tragic. This is our time, sisters. This is our time. Number two, the only behavior that changes is observed behavior. I love that because when my behavior changes, it was when I observed it or somebody else observed it and brought me to accountability. I pray that this study brings you to accountability and just stirs your faith enough to reflect on God's faithfulness versus our rebellious lives or our nation's rebellious uh, life. Confesses sins and commitment is needed to change direction. Get serious with God. Personal responsibility to make a commitment to God and keep it. I love that we're going to learn how to do this next month by studying one proverb every single day that's going to help us observe and commit to change from that one piece of wisdom. I hope you join me in September. God's grace, number three, is greater than our sins. Never feel like a failure. Never allow the enemy to um, put your sin and put your shame in front of you and feel like you have no place for God because he is ready, always ready to forgive, always ready to do everything I showed you in here in the praises. He's ready to provide. He's ready to choose and give and bring you out and find you and do something in your personal lives. He's ready again to deliver. He's ready to show you a way in your wilderness. Are you stuck? Are you lost? Are you scared? Are you afraid? He's going to split your personal Red Sea. He has you taken care of, sister. Um, number four, God is sovereign in the affairs of the nation. He's sovereign, even in the affairs of your daughter, your husband, your marriage. He is just in dealing with mankind. Nehemiah 9.33. 
can look that up. Number five, take time and reflect on God's goodness in your life. I also gave you some reflection questions right down here. But take some time and pause and jot down how God's been faithful to you and your family. Go ahead and praise him. Give him praise. Thank him for your job now, your promotions. Maybe you don't have a job and you lost him, You lost your job. Thank him for the season, knowing that he is faithful. And thank him for what he's preparing to do because the good spirit is going to instruct you. Do you believe that? Then claim that. Amen. Thank him and thank him. Give him glory. Give him glory. Number six, revival affects everyone and every area of your life. Yes, your personal, family, social, professional, business, and church. Spend time praying for revival. When you pray for revival in your nation, you might see it in just the little pocket of your block your neighborhood, your workplace, but you're going to experience revival because one person that decides to turn to God and make a commitment and get serious with God is revival. It's one person at a time that brings the nation together. So we need to be praying that the spirit of the Lord is going to instruct our governors, our nations, um, our, our president now and the future Yes, yes, yes. The Lord will give them light. The Lord will have them thirst for what is needed. One person at a time, bring the world together. Watch what God does. He is a God of grace. Let's be patient. Let's be long-suffering. Let's not forget to love, okay? Love. And more than ever right now, I want you to understand that it is serious that Christians out there be a witness to what God has called them to do. Because everything that you do, you are leading. You are the leader. You are the one that is leading by day with a cloudy pillar. Things are just kind of cloudy around us right now, but keep walking, keep leading, keep giving the light, keep showing people the road to travel. And the way you can do that is by starting with prayer and asking God for your personal things. Now, I broke it down again. Use that handout to break this down in chunks, and the Holy Spirit will reveal to you how you can pray personally for your family and for your nation. How awesome is this? I love it. I pray that this once, you know, puts a desire in you for the outpouring of God's grace and a committed life of discipline and just excitement to acknowledge um, the presence of God. And Let's not be ignorant of his word, but let's just really ask God, to, you know what, to accept and believe in that promised land in your house and for our nation. I love you all. And I will see you for my live video this Friday. I do a live teaching every single Friday on YouTube. Um, if you subscribe to heatherbaxter.com right here, you will get my newsletter every single Friday, which also comes with more notes, more notes for you to fill up your file cabinet and become teachers of the word. Use these in your classes. Use these at your church. I would love to just come behind you and give you stuff that you can use in your woman's ministry or in your small groups. I just want to be that leader for you um, and be blessed. Use it in your marriage. Talk about this with your husband. There's things that you can do and really move this around and just praise God for being so merciful. I love you all and I will see you Friday. Blessings. And again, wait, if you're new, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell button because what it does is it says people want more Christian content out there on YouTube and YouTube takes it from there just by your likes and your subscribing. So it's not to push me forward. It's to push the content out there by us saying, yes, we want more or yes, this sounds good. Love you all and I will see you soon. Bye-bye.